ladies, welcome to the Women Entrepreneur Series. Again, I'm Kristen Price, your host, and I'm so excited that we have Pastor David Watkins. And to tell you a little bit about him, he's a pastor of Twin City Church in Texarkana, Texas, and the Bridge Community Church in Longview, Texas. Pastor Watkins is a husband, a father of two, and not only is he doing all of these things, but he's also the owner of Twin City Events and Conference Center. And not to leave this last, and it's not least at, at all, but he is the CEO of Watkins Financial Services. So ladies, I'm excited to introduce to you Pastor David Watkins. <laughs> Pastor Watkins, it, do you mind me calling you David, Pastor Watkins? Yeah, what, whatever. I'm good. I'm not caught up on titles. <laughs> well, thank you for being a part of this series. And I'm so excited to have you a part of it because you bring a dynamic. Um, we talk about confidence and we talk about connection. Um, and on the financial side, if entrepreneurs are not financially intact and, and don't have their, their money right, then they're not confident. You know, we're dealing with a whole bunch of issues when, when that happens. So you are able to bring the element of how can they get to a place that they're in, um, that they're stable financially. And so, but before we start that and talk about those things, I wanna ask you, how did you get started in the financial business? Well, I tell you, um, I've always wanted to get into finances because I, I wanted to understand it for myself. Um, you know, I wanted to break generational curses with debt and with, with just always being poor and broke and things of that nature. Okay. And so that was, this has been a goal that I've been putting off for, I had been putting off before I started for years. Um, and, uh, you know, the pandemic hit last year and it, cost, it caused me to shift. I was running an inspection business for the federal government where we would go into homes for section eight and, um, and other government properties and inspect those homes mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that they were clean, safe and sanitary. And uh, at, so when the pandemic hit and we weren't able to go into people's houses like that, uh, I wasn't gonna catch COVID for, for it. I was loving what I was doing, but I just wasn't going to do that. So I got, I got out of it. And, uh, my, my, my mother's husband, my stepfather was actually doing this and he was wildly successful. Um, and so he said, Hey man, won't you come into business with me? And the rest is history. And so I've gotten to it. I jumped into it with both feet and and we've been uh, changing people's lives uh, since. And so that's, I'm just excited oh. about it. Wow, that's, that's huge. So, so how long have you been in the business, in this financial? So, you're, so you said your stepfather is in it. So he was sure. your mentor. Sure. He, yeah, he was my mentor getting into it. I've been in it now. I guess we're coming up on about a year now that I, I've been in this portion of it. I've been dealing with the business and money for a while. Right. You know, I just kind of stepped into this space, uh, wow. but the entrepreneurial um, attitude and the, the financial savviness I've been cultivating for a while. Right. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. So, OK, let's get into the finance. And um, so what exactly do you do? Right. So I am a licensed insurance agent. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I do is I deal with very unique um, usage and application of insurance um, that, to be honest with you, I don't know that most people know exist. Um, as a matter of fact, I've talked to many insurance agents and, and they don't even know um, sometimes what I'm speaking of. And so to, to be quite clear, one of the things that I do is I help people get out of all of their debt in nine years or less uh, without adding any additional money to your budget. Uh, and then also, in addition to that, I am able to help you create uh, wealth that is tax free. Right. And so that means that you don't have to pay taxes on the income that we are able to produce inside of one of these investment life insurance policies. 
Wow. So specifically, you're saying help number one, getting out of debt in nine years. Um, and th- now, why did you say that number? Because I mean, everybody's debt is different. So how can you kind of balance it to say nine years? Sure. So it's usually nine years or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things I think a lot of people think when I say that is they say, well, I can go to a credit repair agent and get it done less. I'm not talking about bad debt, right? I'm talking about debt that most people uh, currently service. So that would be a mortgage. That would be a student loan. That would be uh, a house or a car payment, credit card payment. Any of those debts that you're currently servicing, yeah. um, What we see with most of our clients is if you have a mortgage and a student loan, you could be paying on that debt for 20 or 30 years. But with my plan, um, we're usually able to help people get out of that debt in as little, or I'm sorry, the maximum was usually about nine years. Mm -hmm. Uh, And some people depending on um, you know, how we set their policy up, uh, they can do in as little as two or three years. So a really fun thing that I love to share is I got a young couple that we just helped. They had a, um, about $600,000 worth of debt. They had two mortgages, they had student loans, they had all this stuff, and we were gonna be able to help them get out of their debt uh, in about four years. Wow. And so that is amazing. So it just depends on what your situation looks like that will determine the timeline. That's huge. Four years and they hit $600,000. Uh, I don't know what the income was, but I mean, that's, that's a huge leap, you know, for four years being in debt. Sure. Absolutely. Debt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Their income actually surprisingly wasn't very high. Um, they, they had some money and in investments that we were able to use, but their income wasn't very high. I think the, the husband makes about $55,000 a year. Um, and, uh, um, the wife, uh, was making about $75,000 a year. I mean, the income wasn't very high, but right. what we teach people to do is, uh, we teach people how to use their money, uh, strategically. Uh, and uh, a very wise application of their money can go a whole lot further than most of us know that it can go. Absolutely. I I mean, that's huge. And sometimes it's almost like knowing the laws, like you said, you're in insurance. So even for that, being a business woman and and women that are out there in business, it's like, if they don't know, they can't, they can't do it. So you're able to bring that, that knowledge and insight to them so they're able to figure out okay what do i need to do to get out of debt or you know increase my my income or wealth or whatever they're wanting to do so and now you talk about wealth um uh, what are like what are ways that someone can increase their wealth if they they may not have a lot of debt but they want to increase wealth what would they be doing Sure. So we would use the same kind of application system. The only difference is, is that you wouldn't need to uh, use the wealth created in these policies to pay off debt. You would simply allow your wealth to build. And the, the blessing in some of these vehicles that we use is that when wealth builds, it compounds. It's what right. we call uninterrupted compounded interest. And that wealth compounds uh, uninterrupted. One of the things is, is that um, it, it builds very quickly and you can access that money anytime without the threat of penalties, taxes, and fees. And so this would be quite different from other investment vehicles like a 401k or a pension plan or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. where if you got a 401k and you got money building up there, uh, usually if you access that money before um, your retirement age, they're going to penalize you. Right. And not only are they going to penalize you, but they're going to tax you. And you're only going to make the money that exists in that policy, as opposed to another vehicle that we're talking about, where you can access it at any time, you can uh, not have to pay penalties or taxes or fees and your money still compounds even when you borrow against it, right? And so, yeah, this is, this is an amazing vehicle that, uh, that 
that we use to help people create wealth. That's great. That is exceptional. I mean, now, can I ask you this as women, and I say just people in general, because you're helping many people when they're able to get out of debt, can you tell me like the before and after picture? What, what do you see? Uh, because you've experienced, you know, both sides, you know, and you just said it was fun. So yeah. what do you see yeah. like from the before and the after? So what we're seeing is we're seeing people, you know, some of my clients have cried in amazement, you know, because they never thought that. And so let me, let me be clear, right? So for many of my clients, we're able to start eradicating debt from them within the first week of them being approved. And so uh, literally a week after you're approved with this kind of uh, investment policy, mm -hmm. we're able to help you begin to start removing debt. And so the results are instantaneous. Um, um, and you, you may not get out of all of your debt depending on how large it is, but some things you'll be able to do almost immediately, which will free up cash flow for you to do other things with. And right. so it, it just becomes an amazing journey to go on my clients with because they're excited, they're happy. Um, some, some have been in this debt bubble, carrying around this debt chain for years and years and years, right. you know, and now they're finally free. And so um, uh, it's just an amazing thing to see. Um, we teach people how to stop financing debt with banks Okay. and become your own bank and finance your own expenditures. And so it's an amazing journey uh, that people don't have to feel the pressure of rejection from the bank. You don't have to pay large amounts of interest back to the banks. You can literally finance your own debt and then pay yourself back. So it's an amazing thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Look, I'm interested because this is, it's just so a lot of, and I, I can tell you, you know, you can be in business. I've been in real estate for 17 years as a broker. And so this information that you're telling me, I'm like, okay, I've never heard of this stuff, you know, and thinking about it 20 years back. So for those entrepreneurs that are getting started, it's like, if you have this information now, can you imagine how much it can compound, you know, when you're, you're creating wealth and, and you're saving or whatever you're doing, you're, and it's compounding is huge. Sure. You know, we were just sure. told to put it in a, uh, you know, what is it, uh, uh, just an account where it, it can compound, like you can pay it every yeah. year with the IRA or something. I can't even Yeah, IRA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put in the IRA and then each year let it compound or something like that. Sure. Um, sure. You know, and you only have a certain amount. And then, like you said, it's still taxable, though. It's still taxable if you want to pull it. So you're still losing money either way. Um, that's, yeah, that's I think the federal government just kind of raised the bar on what you can put in the IRA. I think it's about 7,000 a year now or yeah. something like that. But again, as you said, an IRA is still taxable um, and um, it's, it's not going to make you nearly the amount of money this is going to make you. Um, and for those who want to put larger amounts of cash, right, you know, um, if you got money sitting somewhere, you know, if you used to work a job and you got an old 401k and it's just sitting there, um, this vehicle will be good for a person. If you got, you know, if you've worked your behind off and you got cash sitting in a savings account, but you're not earning any money on it, this policy would be good for you. Uh, there are a number of, uh, you know, very practical uses that we can, we can help you discover uh, to move money to a policy like this and essentially uh, put yourself in a better position. Wow. Wow. That, that, this is great. This is great. So um, you're saying to build the wealth get, to get out of debt. And I guess with the women and that are, that are paying attention to this, how secure is this? How, because, you know, IRA is pretty secure. Um, but you know, hey, everything right now, 2020 showed us ain't nothing secure, but look, I say, but God himself, <laughs> he's the only one, the same, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but how secure is this in insurance or this way of investing? Very secure. So I'm glad you asked that. Let me talk about that for a moment. Um, one of the things is that banks insure, insure their money 
with these vehicles that I'm talking about here. And so if you bank with any major bank or you know, um, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you know, Chase, if you do the research, one of the things that you find is that banks insure their money with insurance companies in these kind of policies. Um, the company that I primarily use, and there are multiple companies that do it, but I use Lafayette Life Insurance as a primary company. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, A plus rating. Um, they've been in, they're backed by a group called Western and Southern Financial Group. They've been in business for more than 100 years. Um, they are able to guarantee returns uh, plus annual dividends. I want to be clear that the returns uh, that they're guaranteeing uh, is the compounding interest rate of 4%. The dividends is not guaranteed. Right. However, um, they've paid it for the last 100 years. They've never missed a year in the last 100 years. And so legally, I can't tell you it's guaranteed, but I can tell you that they've never not paid it uh, in the last 100 years. So insurance other than a trust is the best way to protect your assets, right? So I often tell my clients that if you, if you were driving down the road and got into an accident, God forbid, and somebody decided they wanted to sue you, mm -hmm. they can sue your, you for your house and your savings and your 401k and your pension plan and all of that and be awarded that. They can even garnish your future wages, wow. you know, but when you put money, when you invest it into a life insurance policy, they legally cannot touch it. And so this is wealth that is protected from any kind of liability that you would face in the future. It, it's protected from divorce, it's protected from child support, it's protected from everything. Yeah. And so have you ever wondered how uh, people like OJ Simpson and others have been through hell and back with the legal system and they come out and still have money? Well, they, they hide it in vehicles like this. And so um, uh, this is a well-documented uh, investment vehicle. There's a book that you can read about this called uh, What Would the Rockefellers Do? How the Rich Get and Stay Wealthy. Right. Um, there are, um, uh, there's a book by a man named R. Nelson Nash. He actually uh, pioneered this concept. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Become Your Own Banker. Uh, and so this is a well-documented um, uh, thing. We just don't have a lot of people who, who know about it. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if, if you send me an email, um, I have an ebook that I'll email to you uh, if you want to read an email book, uh, an ebook, ebook about it uh, containing the same information. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if we can send it to everybody, but I, I definitely want to look at it. <laughs> um, sure. And that's, that's also part of uh, you, what you're doing for everyone. I guess I can announce it now. It's not the end of our conversation, but you're, you're giving away um, to ladies you get. Um, let's see. What is it? Uh, you're going to provide a free financial, uh, a free financial plan mm -hmm. to get out of debt or create wealth um, to everyone. Is that correct? Sure. So here's how this works. If you if you send me an email, uh, you book a time uh, for us to do that. Then one of the things that I'll do is you will get on a call. Uh, we'll get your your information together. I just need to know what you owe, who you owe, how much is the interest on those debts. Give me a couple of days turnaround and I'll literally produce for you a free plan on how long it would take for you to get out of that debt. Um, or if you don't have any debt, but you wanna get to a fi certain financial goal, I'll produce for you a plan on how to get to that financial goal. And so I don't ask for any information, by the way, um, that's, that's really personal. I'm never going to ask you for your social security call, uh, social security number mm -hmm. until we get ready uh, to set up the policy. Then they'll need that for insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. 
I'll never ask you for your bank account information. I'll never ask you for um, your account information for these creditors. I never ask you for any of that personal information. As a matter of fact, you never send me a check. Like you never write me a check. You never pay me. You would only pay the insurance person. And I absolutely love that part about my business because in a world where so many people are being scammed out of their money, I like the idea that I don't touch anybody's money, you know? And so um, I just want to drop that. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you, so what do, what do you charge for services if say they see the plan and they're like, so you get paid from the insurance companies once the it's, the, it's set of what they're going to get. Is that what it is? Yes. So they pay you out of their own pocket. Yes. Time. So you, you're right. So the, I get paid commission from the insurance company. Okay. Um, you never pay me. The insurance company pays me. Okay. Um, the program that I use um, um, to produce the debt report, I certainly can charge from, for it because it's not associated with the insurance company. Right. right. Um, but for you all, uh, whoever contacts me, uh, from from this screening, uh, I will not uh, charge you at all. And so we we won't have a conversation about money at all. Right. This is a benefit that <laughs> you get just from tuning in and checking us out. Awesome, ladies. Hey, you better be glad you tuned in. This is a blessing. Um, just so excited. I mean, this is this is good stuff. This now, when you talk about confidence, hey, your money, your you got more money in your pocket, you're gonna be confident. And as entrepreneurs, why are you in business? Of course, you know, you're in business to serve, but you're in business also, you need to, to create some type of wealth or uh, finances to keep going. So, I mean, sure. this, this is also, this is great stuff. Um, now, in, in talking about just how you balance, now I want to talk about, because, you know, we, we're talking about confidence and connection. So you are a pastor. How in the world are you balancing your services with pastoring two churches, you're a dad and a husband. I mean, that's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So um, one of the things that that I, I try to do is I try to stick to a schedule. Okay. I, I try to stick to a very tight schedule and I take my days. Um, on Mondays, I try not to do anything. Um, I call them don't move Monday, you know, <laughs> and um, and I don't feel guilty about it, right? I, if I want to sit on the couch and watch TV and, or whatever, I don't feel guilty. When that phone rings, if I don't want to answer it, I don't answer it. Okay. Um, and so I, 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 I t stick to a tight schedule. But um, secondly, I surround myself with good and competent people. Okay. Um, and so um, I had a mentor he was the president of the HBCU that I went to. He's deceased now, but his name was Dr. Jack Evans. And uh, he was president, the longest serving black uh, uh, president uh, or longest serving president of any university in America, but uh, mm -hmm. he was the HBCU president. What school? And uh, Southwestern Christian College in Terrell, Texas. It was a little small Christian school there. That's where I got my bachelor's degree. And um, Dr. Evans took a risk on me. He hired me when I was still a student to be the director of Title X funding. Um, I also became director of the dormitory and also was an admissions recruiter. Like he took a risk on me as a young kid. Wow. And I ran into his office one day and he said, uh, and I was asking him a question about something and he said, uh, he said, it's, it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is permission. Ooh. And he went back to work. What he was teaching me was, he was teaching me to have a level of ambition and a level of stick to itness right. and a level of you better figure it out. Yeah. And if it goes wrong, we'll fix it later, mm -hmm. but figure it out. Get it done. And so one of the things I try to do with my team of people around me is I try to empower them to figure it out. Yeah. And you call me when it goes wrong and I'll tell you how to fix it, you know, 
but but I don't want to I don't want to be bothered by the details that I don't have to be bothered by. And so oh. that's that's kind of what my approach is to leadership. And so I I allow the people around me to do what they do. Right. And I do what I do and we'll fix it, you know, later on. You know, so um now I, I realize that there are some 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 issues with that kind of approach, right? Because it can cost you. Yeah. It can definitely cost you. Lessons, yeah. But I believe that well, what will cost you more is the is is to have incompetent people around you that can't can't make it without you. Yes. Right? You, know, make you what you end up doing is if if your business can't make it without you. You don't have a business, you have a side hustle. Exactly. You know, and so I'm not interested in creating a side hustle. I need an organization. Right. And so that's my approach to leadership. Wow. So you approach this with your organization, your church, as well as your, your company. That's huge. Yes. And I see you've expanded not just the financial services, but you also are into the event planning business and or you have a, a center, correct, to do that. Yeah. So, I do. I, we have a 25,000 square foot facility. Um, we have one, two, three, about six spaces for uh, indoor and outdoor event spaces. And so that's exceptional. Yeah. And that's definitely needed. I, well, I say out this way where I'm at, but definitely needed. Um, so you, you're balancing that. So you're saying you you tell people to, to get things done, just get it done. And, and if you, you know, figure it out. Um, and be confident in it. So really that you're saying, believe in your ability to, to handle something. Um, sure. What about, how, how do you balance like, because you say your schedule is, is on tech. So do you get up early in the morning? Like what kind of schedule do you have per day when you wake up to, to going to bed? Yes. So in the morning time, I drop both of my children off at school. Uh, I do that to give my wife time um, for her personal time. She's a college professor. And every morning she works out religiously. And so I let her have that workout time um, and I take our kids to school. Uh, and then after I take our kids to school, um, I'm usually done with that process about 8.15 ish. I'm on the, on the track or, you know, getting my morning walk in every morning about 8.30, 8.45. Okay. I'm going to do that to about 9.45, I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna shower. You know, if I don't have a meeting, obviously this changes, but but it, without those early morning meetings, I'm gonna shower, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna be at the office by 10.30 uh, and I'm gonna be logging into my first meeting, you know, um, you know, 10.30, 10.45, somewhere around there. Um, I'm going to work uh, through lunch till about um, two o'clock. My meetings are normally going to last anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. Um, uh, and I'm gonna work through lunch until about, uh, about 2.30, three o'clock when I have to go pick up my children. Um, and uh, um, I I'm gonna do that, right? And so, and then the evening time is strictly reserved for family unless I have an evening meeting that, you know, takes precedence, but I'm going to be in the living room watching TV with my kids. Um, there are certain days that I dedicate strictly to ministry. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain days that I dedicate strictly to financial services. There are certain days that um, I dedicate uh, strictly to the administration of uh, my event and conference center. And so um, th that's kind of how I do it. Like, you know, sometimes it ain't pretty, right? you right. know, but um, it's, it, it works for me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be at work Saturday, you know, I'm going to be, you know, doing ministry stuff Saturday or, and obviously Sunday, but that's how I, I do it. And, um, you know, I, it just, it kind of works. That's abundant life. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. And, and I love it because you, you're time blocking. That's what it looks like. You are setting those times. I believe you're able to be more productive when you time block. 
because I've had to learn that because as a, somebody that I'm totally like, you know, go, 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 go. But it was like when I started time blocking, it, it, my, I got so many more things done, you know, so. Yeah, I don't let other people set my schedule for me. I set it, right, you know, and so by that, I mean, if, if you allow somebody to call you on the phone, like, hey, you got a minute? No, I don't have a minute, right, you know, you know, <laughs> hey, can you do this or hey, can you do that, you know. And so I'm very protective of my schedule and I'm very protective of the time that I spend with my family. Um, and so I, I try to make sure that I don't let other people dictate uh, my, my schedule, but I do it. Right, put them in a meeting. You wanna meet, we meet with me tomorrow, next week. No. <laughs> that makes sense. Absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. Thank you. you. It's so much information you've given us today. And we're just grateful for just this opportunity to meet you and to learn about your business and, and what you're doing in Texas. Um, and so we definitely look forward to having you uh, and, and to uh, ladies for you guys to connect with Pastor Watkins, as well as um, get this opportunity. Pastor Watkins, we wanna just thank you for being a part of this series and thank you for the information that you have enriched us with and ladies definitely connect with pastor Watkins. so what is your email address or how can they get in touch with you sure so my email address is watkins w-a-t-k-i-n-s d 818 at gmail.com that's watkins w-a-t-k-i-n-s d 818 at gmail.com um you can go to my website at uh, invest your way to freedom.com. Perfect. Invest your way to freedom.com. Um, and check out what we offer there. But, um, you know, yeah, you can connect with me on any social media platform. It's going to be Watkins financial services. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, um, um, TikTok. I, I think I'm on all of them. You can find me in some way. <laughs> Uh, and so I love to connect with anybody and just help you out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're just glad you were here. Thank you for having me, Miss Bryce. I enjoyed the conversation and uh, I just enjoyed uh, 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 sharing some knowledge in any way that I can help you or anybody else. Let me know. And uh, I got you.